He is my God, and we are his people. He is our God, and we are his people. In the time I have left, I just, I just need to convince you with one thing, and that your daddy loves you. Someone say, my daddy loves me. And I, I, I charge you in the name of the Lord that you, you, you will look at the book of Leviticus, and then through Jeremiah, through Ezekiel, even all the way through Revelation, um, that God talks about my people. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. That is a covenant term. Someone say covenant term. And so God is saying that I am committed to you no matter what. You are my people, and I am your God. Hallelujah. And so now our faith must, must be resolute. No more shaky faith. Turn to your neighbor and says, no more of that shaky faith. Last week, you were showing me something shaky. Tell them, last week, you were showing me something shaky. Stop it. Cut it out. All right? No more shaky faith. Faith, faith, faith that is withered by life circumstances. Faith that is shaken by situations. That is not the covenant we have with our God. The covenant that we have with God is that he is our God and we are his people and he is fully committed. Somebody say amen. And so if you believe that God is fully committed to you, then there is no need to cry and to mope and to complain. It is when you are not sure whether God is going to come through or not, whether God cares or not, you know, is it really the will of God? That's when you start wondering, you know, uh, I know God said, but is it really true? The enemy has only one assignment, to make you question the word of God. That is it. I shared with the, with the, with the first service, you know, you are at the airport, you are on your way to your destiny and your divine assignment and the enemy shows up with a ticket for a three-day vacation somewhere that is not of God. And then you are like, no, I'm supposed to go here and just like Eve, the devil says, did God really say? With that phrase alone, did God really say? With that question alone, uh, you are right. He said I should come. But he didn't give me a date. He didn't give me a time. So you know what? I think I have time to entertain your ticket. The enemy doesn't go on the trip with you. You take it all by yourself. But how did he get you? He got you to question the word of God. He got you to... Ah, maybe there's, there's something not fully write about what God said. Maybe I don't understand. Maybe, maybe God is saying something else. Church, I come to tell you, your God is not saying anything else. Your God says that you are my people and I am your God. I am fully committed to you. The charge God has for you today is, would you be fully committed to him to the point that your life begins to show that you are in covenant with God? Because many of us say, you know, covenant keeping God. You know, you are a great covenant keeping God. You are amazing God. But then we do not live like people of covenant. If you have a covenant with God, it's what you are saying of covenant. It's what you are doing of covenant. Is your life reflecting covenant? Or is it, is it showing something else? If it is showing something else, the Bible says by their fruit, you shall know them. You can't tell me you are a mango tree and I see oranges on your, on your branches. You can't say, I have covenant with God, but the words of my mouth are fear and condemnation. Our God is fully committed. He says that I am your God and you are my people. So if that is the case, may we have a people whose mind are made up, whose mind is made up. No longer questioning God. No longer doubting. Is he going to come through for me? No longer living through life like you are alone. No longer living through life like God has abandoned you. No longer living through life like you are, you know, uh, you alone. The whole world has come down upon you. I'm not saying we don't go through stuff. Someone say, we, we all go through stuff. We all go through stuff. In this life, you have trouble. I know that. But when you go through it, uh, may you remember that your God says, he is your God and you are his. That is one thing you cannot negotiate. Don't ever take your covenant to the devil for negotiation. 
Don't ever allow. See, you have to be resilient. You, that is one place you don't go. You don't allow the enemy to negotiate with you what God said. You will always lose because he was here before you. He was here when the covenant was cut. He knows your weakness. Don't ever take your covenant to the enemy and say, well, hmm, devil, hmm, things are rough. You see, you, see, you have been causing pain in my life. I see things are rough. And so, you see, is this God? Is it not? Don't do that. But we do that with the confession of our mouth. We do that as if God is not with us. We forget the covenant that we have with him. Someone say, I will not compromise my covenant. I will not compromise my covenant. I will not compromise my covenant. There is something about uh, when you go onto the turf of somebody else. You must obey their laws. When you come to my house, you follow my rules. When I go to the DMV, no matter how much I'm in a hurry, I have to wait for now serving. No matter how, it, it doesn't matter how fast I want to get out of there. They don't care about my schedule. I got to obey by, by their rules, right? If I go to another country, I may say, no, I am, I, I am an American. Okay. I mean, in the, we form a long line and we go see the inspector and then we go, There's, your American doesn't change anything. In this land, that's how we do it. When you go onto somebody's turf, you operate by their laws. Somebody say amen. Many of us, unfortunately, the church has given up our authority and we are playing on the turf of the enemy. No longer, no wonder we are compromised. Because whether you like it or not, when you are on the turf of the enemy, you got to play according to his rules. Hallelujah. One of the most dangerous words I, I, I want to share with you as a church and as a body is the word assimilation. Someone say assimilation. Assimilation is, is, is when, when, when one thing becomes like another, right? Becomes joined, becomes where, where, where you can no longer tell the difference, right? And so, and so uh, the, the, uh, uh, we go, we go, you know, I come to America and I have a thick accent. And then the more I talk to Americans, the more I live there, the more I eat the burger, from Hardy's, right? And the more the more I do that, the more my accent changes, right? The more somebody's like he hasn't changed. Amen. He hasn't changed. It, it hasn't changed because it's on purpose. But but the way when I go home right now, they will say I talk too fast. And you guys are like, you are too slow. You know, every, every, all you New Yorkers are like, man, you're too slow, right? <laughs> but when I came here, I adapted, right? Yeah, I can say that in Africa, it's, in Ghana, it's very warm. So I'm going to wear shorts. Well, it's winter, bro. It doesn't matter what you want to wear. It's winter. You got to adapt. If we, as the people of God, begin to adapt to the enemy, you will lose your identity. If you begin to adapt to the thinking of this world, if you leave the covenant with God, the God that has died for you and says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You leave your Bible, you leave your prayer time, you leave all that anointing, and now you go and you're like a devil, you know, things are rough and I can't. If, if, if you forget your covenant, you will become like the world. And the church has compromised our worship. We have compromised our faith. We have compromised our identity. So much so that the world can walk past us and not feel anything. They can talk to us and we sound like we are motivational speakers. We don't, we don't have an identity. If you are in covenant with God, or let me say it this way, because you are in covenant with God, you cannot assimilate. Because when you assimilate into another culture, the culture where you are similar to rules your life. The world is supposed to adapt to us. We are not supposed to adapt to them. Especially when it comes to your way of thinking. You cannot adapt your thinking to the way of the world. They must adjust to us. In the way you feel. In your, in your, in your, in your relationships. In your attitude. In everything that you do. We cannot submit the kingdom of God to a weaker kingdom. Hallelujah. When the Assyrians back 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 in the day when the uh, when they when they when they conquered somebody, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna use it as an example. If the Assyrians are to come are to come to this land and conquer these people, what they would do is they will they will conquer another place, this area, and they will take people from here 
and move them all the way to another area and settle them. And then move the people from here and move them all the way to settle them. You will become assimilated. You can't even tell who your daddy is. You can tell the difference. They're speaking their language. They're talking. All of a sudden, it is home. That is how the enemy gets us with sin, with disobedience. You go onto his turf. Now you start speaking his language. Then all of a sudden, what was wrong? What sounded evil? No longer sounds evil. Because we have compromised. This is the point I want you to get, church. It is the, it is the stronger kingdom that controls the end result. And so if we acquiesce and give up to the enemy, we are saying that forget my covenant keeping God. Forget the power of my covenant. What you are doing, devil, is more powerful than my God. That's what you are saying. Because the dominant culture will always win. The dominant group will always win. But we are born from above. But is the First John 5, 14. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. I, I, I am from far away. I am an ambassador of Christ. This world is not my home. My identity is from a different land. And so when you show up with covenant, you show up to enforce covenant. You don't show up to negotiate covenant. You don't show up to negotiate the covenant of your homeland. You come as an ambassador bearing the credentials and the authority of the land. Nothing changes in the covenant. My God is a covenant keeping God. Your God it's a covenant-keeping God. I charge you this day to begin to believe God with all your might, with all your life, with every part of you. Begin to believe God. When you have covenant, you, you never give up. When you have covenant, you never give up. When you have covenant, you never give up. A stranger may come and knock at the door and for one second and says, is anybody home? Is anybody home? And by you, as a covenant person, know that even though there's no car there, there's somebody in the house. Hallelujah. You know. I got a covenant. I am not leaving until this door is open. I'm not leaving. I, I got a covenant. Oh, stop bothering them. Don't worry. It's not bother. It's covenant. You know, no. And they, and they, and they're going to be upset. No, they won't. We sign a covenant. They need. Every time I call, when we call upon him, he will answer, right? Is that what his covenant says? But when you don't have covenant and you are just swinging through or you Doubt the covenant. When you knock and knock and knock and nothing opens, you say, ah, maybe God has forgotten. Maybe God has changed his mind. Maybe God is not going to fulfill his word. But when you have covenant, you actually build a house here. Until this door opens, you don't move. He will be your God and you are his people. That should not change. Church, that should never, ever change. Your confidence and your resilience in God should never, ever change. Weeping may endure for a night. It may come in the afternoon. It may come right in the evening. It doesn't matter when weeping comes. Uh, it has no power over you. Somebody say amen. You, 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 you entrench yourself in the covenant of God. Church, God is looking for radical, crazy people. People who would dare believe him. People whose mind is made up and that my God is my God and I am not shifting. I am not changing. I'm not changing my, my, my mind to agree with you. I'm not changing my emotion to agree with you. Stop adapting your marriage to the world, your finances to the world, your thinking to the world, and your mission to the world. Stop adapting to them. You can't change things that you adapt to. You can't. Once you adapt to it, it, it becomes part of you. So light and darkness have no relationship. Hallelujah. Let us walk in that understanding that our God is a covenant-keeping God. Our God is a covenant-keeping God. Someone say with me, my God is a covenant-keeping God. My mind is made up. My mind is made up. Someone say boldly, my mind is made up. My mind is made up. And say self my mind is made up. This is not the time to negotiate God's covenant with you. He did it before you were born. Before you were formed in the womb, he knew you. Christ died before you were born. So why are you going to try to negotiate something you have no power over? Amen.